Today we are going to talk about oxygen saturation levels in different chambers of the heart in normal heart and heart with congenital anomalies. And we are going to see the step up changes in oxygen saturation that occurs with changes or with congenital anomalies. Now this is a normal heart. In the normal heart the oxygen saturation level in the right atrium in the right atrium is 70%. Similarly, the oxygen saturation level of blood in the right ventricle is also 70%. Similarly, the oxygen saturation level in the pulmonary artery or the artery which is taking blood to the lungs is also 70%. This is basically the deoxygenated blood. And here we see this is the right atrium. Here we have the left atrium, here we have the aorta and here we have the left ventricle. The oxygen saturation of blood in the left atrium is 100%. Similarly, oxygen saturation of blood in the left ventricle is 100%. Oxygen saturation of blood in the aorta is also 100%. Now the aorta is taking blood to the body and the pulmonary artery is basically taking blood to the lungs for oxygenation purpose. What happens in different types of congenital anomalies is that there is mixing of blood. Now first of all we will discuss AST or atrial septal atrial septum defect. What happens is that there is mixing of blood at the level of atria. There is a septum defect in the right atrium and the left atrium. There is a gap. There is a gap between the right atrium and the left atrium. And the oxygenated blood from the left atrium can come into the right atrium. Through this AST or atrial septum defect. What happens is that this 100% oxygenated blood in the left atrium when mixes with the 70% oxygenated blood in the right atrium, it makes its, its final concentration of oxygen or saturation of oxygen is 85%. Now this 85% saturated blood goes into the left uh, the right ventricle as well. So the saturation of blood in the right ventricle is also 85% in atrial septal defect as compared to the normal 70% saturation of blood in the right ventricle and 70% saturation of blood in the right atrium. Now similarly the same blood goes into the pulmonary artery so the saturation of blood in the pulmonary artery is also 85%. So these are the changes in the atrial septal atrial septum defect because there is a defect in the atrium septum and pressure on the left atrium is high so blood from the left atrium goes into the right atrium and decreases sorry increases the saturation of blood or increases the oxygen saturation of blood in the right atrium and onwards. Now, what happens in the VSD, ventricular septum defect? In the ventricular septum defect, there is a defect in the ventricular septum. Here we see the right ventricle and the left ventricle, they have a defect and blood from the right ventricle, right ventricle, can go into the uh, sorry the, the blood from the left ventricle can go into the left ventricle can go into the right ventricle from the LV into the RV because pressure is high on the left ventricle. Now this will increase the saturation of blood in the left ventricle but we see that the saturation of blood in the atrium remains 70% as normal. Here in the ASD, the saturation changed in the right atrium as well, in the right ventricle as well and in the uh, pulmonary artery as well. But in the VSD, the defect is in the ventricle, in the ventricular septum instead of the 
atrial septum so the deoxy uh, so the step up changes or the increase in oxygen saturation changes starts in the ventricles and onward while the oxygen saturation in the right atrium remains the same the same 70% while the saturation in the ventricle the right ventricle increases from 70% that is normal to 85% which is high due to the vsd due to the vst now the saturation of the left uh, atrium left ventricle and aorta will remain 100% both in asd and in vst saturation of both these will remain the right atrium uh, sorry the left atrium the left ventricle and aorta will remain 100% in both asd and vst but saturation will change in the right atrium and right ventricle and pulmonary artery in asd and the right ventricle and pulmonary artery in vst only now what happens in pda uh, patent ductus arteriosus now basically patent ductus arteriosus is a connection between the aorta and the pulmonary artery these two vessels basically which are taking this aorta is taking blood to the body while pulmonary artery is taking blood to the lungs this is deoxygenated blood and it is going to the lungs for oxygenation process while the oxygenated blood in the aorta is going to the body normally there is no connection the, there is a connection which uh, stops after birth there is a connection before birth but after birth this connection stops and uh, this there is a vessel which uh, constricts after birth but in patent ductus arteriosus this connection remains so what happens in the patent ductus arteriosus is that the saturation in the right atrium in the right ventricle it remains the same 70% is the normal here this is the normal heart so the saturation remains normal in the right atrium and right ventricle but is there is a connection between the aorta and the pulmonary artery so oxygenated blood and due to high pressure comes into the pulmonary artery and increases the saturation of blood in the pulmonary artery only the saturation in the right atrium is the same right ventricle is the same but the saturation in the pulmonary artery has increased to 85% and then again we will discuss we will uh, remind that the saturation of the blood in the left atrium left ventricle and the aorta will remain the same 100% now we see that the step up changes step up changes these step up changes they occur from the atria onwards in the asd from the ventricle onwards in the vsd and it occurs only in the pulmonary artery onwards in pda so depending upon the level of congenital anomaly that level will determine the point of step up in oxygen saturation and these oxygenation uh, these um, oxygenation level this saturation level of blood in the uh, different chambers of the heart can be uh, confirmed with the help of catheterization process so what happens in the catheterization is that a catheter is passed through the radial artery or some other uh, blood vessel and it is brought into the different chambers of the heart and from the periphery it comes into the different chambers of the heart it takes the uh, blood and it can uh, measure the saturation of oxygen in that particular uh, chamber and then determines the saturation through which uh, the congenital anomaly can be determined so the difference the the difference or the step up changes in saturation can basically help in the diagnosis of asd vsd or pda that's all about step up changes that's all about a different oxygen saturation level in different chambers of the heart